Chernobyl is an HBO miniseries five episodes long that chronicles the devastating real-life events that took place in 1986 at a nuclear power station in northern Ukraine. This is a story of one of the world's worst man-made catastrophes. And we follow a group of people, some real, some fictional, as they try to deal with this disaster. So yeah, I am way behind on this one. I mean, when it comes to TV shows, I usually tend to be that guy that waits for other people to say that they're really great before I invest the time in them because they take a lot more time than a movie. I like to be an early adopter of a film, but I'm usually late to the party when it comes to great TV. I wait for people to tell me Game of Thrones is good, and then I watch it. I wait for people to tell me that Breaking Bad was good, and then I watch it. So in the case of Chernobyl, as soon as everyone was saying it was like the greatest show ever, in fact, on IMDb, it's been ranked as the number one highest rated TV show of all time. Naturally, I wanted to watch it, and it is great. One of the things that strikes me the most about this show is the sense of realism. When it comes to TV and especially movies, directors like to make things seem really big. And in the case of this miniseries, there's parts that are fiction. There's characters that don't exist in real life representing entire groups of people. And there are conversations that nobody could possibly know what exactly was said, private moments, and those have obviously been created for our entertainment. But there's a grounded sense to this show that feels as if it's pushing for realism when most of the time in movies or TV, they might try to get really big and have these grand moments. But there's plenty of scenes that go over in excruciating detail how a nuclear power station works, just exactly why this problem is so devastating and what it can mean for thousands and thousands of people over the course of many, many years. And in that way, the show is terrifying because sure, some of those scenes can be looked at as exposition for the audience. And in many ways it is, we have to understand how these things work to understand why we should be afraid of them. Those scenes are handled with such care from the director and the writer that those proceedings feel very raw. And they remind us just how scary this planet can be when things go wrong. And in the case of Chernobyl, a lot of things went wrong. And a lot of it is built around people who were lying and people who never thought anything bad would happen to them. There's one specific scene where two characters played by Stellan Skarsgård and Jared Harris. They're sitting down talking about how most people just assume that things don't happen to them. They go on with their lives knowing that they'll die when they're 85 and everything's going to be fine. But sometimes that doesn't happen. And we had an entire group of people who just assumed nothing was going to happen and we got Chernobyl out of it. And this show is meticulous in its craft of exploring this event, exploring the horror of it, the chaos of it, but also showcasing characters that just assumed everything was going to be fine. And we're gonna get into some spoilers here. So if you have not yet seen Chernobyl, I highly recommend it. It's definitely an excellent mini series and worth your time, just purely for the directing and writing craft alone, but especially for some of the performances like Jared Harris, who gives, I think, the best performance of his entire career. Stellan Skarsgård is also really strong here, as is Emily Watson. So now that we got the spoiler warning out of the way, there's a woman in the TV show who is pregnant and her husband's a firefighter who went initially to try to put out the flames that this disaster started and she just follows her husband everywhere. He thinks he's gonna be okay, he's playing cards, his skin is melting away and he thinks everything's just gonna be fine. And despite being pregnant, she's there right by his side, getting infected by that radiation. Characters in this show make decisions that turn your stomach. There's a sequence where people have to go into a town and just kill all the animals. So if you, if you have a thing with dead dogs, this show was gonna fuck you up. Holy shit. They knew where to turn the screws to make you feel as if you were watching an event that was absolutely excruciating to live through. But at the same time, it honors those who were first responders, who were victims of the event. And especially with the final episode, you learn of just the extent of the corruption that was going on behind the scenes that made everything possible. And it pisses you off, you know? It makes you mad, and it should, because this should never happen again. An event like this, which is something that I heard quite a bit about when I was a kid, 
this should never exist. Like this, this is not something that should ever occur on our planet. And so it makes you mad. It makes you want to make sure that that never happens again. It makes you want to do something. And, and that's awesome that a miniseries can do that. Purely from a creative side though, what's so interesting to me about this series is the writer Craig Mazin and his journey. Because if you look at his filmography, he has made tons of spoof movies. He wrote some of the scary movie films. He wrote Superhero Movie, The Hangover Part 2, The Hangover Part 3, Identity Thief. And now suddenly he just shows up and is like, hey, I wrote Chernobyl. Fuck you. <laughs> like, how did that happen? That's awesome. Good job, man. Like, that's really fucking cool. I love whenever a writer or a director is able to reinvent themselves and they just say, like, actually, I'd rather be doing this. Or not necessarily that he'd, he'd rather be doing this, but just that, hey, you don't have to stay and do the exact same thing for your entire career. You can also have strengths in other fields. So this tells me studios out there, don't put your creative people in a box. Don't assume that X person can only do comedy. Don't assume that Y person can only do drama. Everybody has strengths and weaknesses, but you can explore what you would love to do and find ways to make that possible. So it's kind of inspiring if you look at his career trajectory and see where he's gone. It kind of makes you want to say the hell with it and just start writing your screenplay. Don't listen to other people. Just open up that computer and start writing it. It doesn't matter what other people think. Just work on it. And I didn't expect to be that inspired by just looking at his filmography, but I've never seen such a change. Johan Renk, and I apologize if I said that incorrectly, lends a steady hand to this entire show. It's beautifully shot. He's mostly known for music videos and some TV like Breaking Bad and The Bates Motel. And here he brings something to it that, again, just feels very grounded. At times you feel like an observer, a fly on the wall. It's a bit documentary-esque, but not as handheld as you might expect from something like Paul Greengrass and his approach. There's a lockdown sensibility to the way he helms this show, and it's really, really well done. And he knows just when to end an episode. The shot that is going to leave you as chilled as you possibly could be. When it comes to negatives, um... There's like one kind of slow episode. The second to the last episode is probably the weakest. That episode didn't feel as strong as the others, didn't feel as emotionally tormenting as the others. And that's about it. And even when I say that it wasn't as good as the others, it was still great. Because that episode has this rooftop scene that is just so nail-biting and just terrifying. So it's hard to find a weak link in the show. It's really strong, and I highly suggest checking it out. I'm going to give Chernobyl an A. Definitely check this one out, guys. I do think it's worth your time, and I'm sorry that it took me so long to watch it. I've just been, like, super busy, and as I said, sometimes I don't really jump on board with TV shows until I hear that they're really great. But I'm excited I did get to see it, and I hope you guys check it out, too, if you haven't already. I do also want to give a big thank you to the sponsor for this video, and that is Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream is a subscription streaming service made for those of you who have no shame in your nerd game. With over 2,400 documentaries and nonfiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers, including exclusive originals, Curiosity Stream is the world's first streaming service addressing our lifelong quest to learn, explore, and understand. Their content spans science, nature, history, technology, society and lifestyle. Since we're talking about Chernobyl already, they have some documentaries about that event, including Nature Fights Back in Chernobyl. This is a French film where the filmmakers actually go directly into the exclusion zone and butterfly effect Chernobyl. This is part of a popular series that envisions what would happen if things went differently during turning points in our history. So if you visit curiositystream.com Stuckman and use the promo code Stuckman, you can get your first 31 days of this excellent service for free. That link is in the description below. That's curiositystream.com slash Stuckman, promo code Stuckman. Thank you guys so much, as always, for watching this video, and thank you to Curiosity Stream for sponsoring it. You guys are the best. Look forward to more reviews very soon, and if you like this, you can click right here and get Stuckmanized.